In Oracle Database 23C, JSON functionality in PL SQL has been enhanced to be able to work with aggregate objects like arrays. If you keep watching, I will explain why Oracle has added this feature, how to use it, and when to use it. Before I continue to explain the new functionality, I want to give you a little bit more information on aggregates. Most people writing select statements might only recognize things like sum or count as the aggregate functions they use in select, having or order by clauses of their query. But these are not the only aggregates in the database. Aggregate basically means a single result formed or calculated by the combination of several separate elements. So as long as there is a single result that contains a combination of several elements, it is called an aggregate. In PL SQL, we also have aggregates. We can create a single variable that contains multiple elements in, for example, a varray type. One single variable can contain multiple elements, just like a row in the database. And each element could have a record that contains one or more fields, just like columns in a database. You could therefore read the contents of an entire table into a single variable in PL SQL. That's also called an aggregate. Here's an example. In this block of PL SQL, I declare a new type called type array, which can contain a maximum of four elements, and each element is of type varchar2 with a length of 15. On the next line, I declare a new variable called myArray1, not using a number of varchar, but using my newly created local type type array. To make things easier, I'm inserting three values into this variable. The next line contains a second variable called myArray2, using the same local type, typeArray. When the code begins, I assign the contents of myArray1 to the variable myArray2, just to show you that there is only one variable which contains the aggregate names. Using DMMS output, we can now show the individual elements by using their index or slot in the array. This is what it looks like when we run this in the database. This is the anonymous PL SQL block that we execute. And this is the result. Each name on a single line has an individual value. Now why are aggregates so important in PL SQL? As PL SQL is the procedural extension or programming language of the database, we will mostly work with data from this database. To access the database for reading or writing, the PL SQL engine needs to call the SQL engine to execute whatever is needed. This is called a context switch. Switching between the PL SQL engine and the SQL engine takes time, which you'll probably not notice when you do a large select or a single update. But if you want to do DML on thousands or millions of rows, the context switching will determine a large part of the speed of throughput. Therefore, if you could read a large amount of data into memory in PL SQL, do your magic on that data and write it back in one big interaction, your performance would increase dramatically. For this, we have the bulk collect and the for all statements that we can leverage. Using bulk collect, you can read a large amount of data into a PL SQL aggregate in a single context switch. And using for all, you can write this data or do instant updates and deletes in the database, but also in a single context switch. Downside of this way of working with your data is that the regular safeguards like locking, unique keys or foreign keys are not checked when manipulating the data inside PL SQL. Of course, they are enforced when you interact with the database, but if something happens, you need to programmatically prevent or solve it. Now that I've explained a bit more about aggregates inside PL SQL, what exactly is new in 23C in this area? Well, we have expanded the functionality of the JSON function and the JSON value function to accept PL SQL aggregates as source and target. So we can now use a PL SQL aggregate, like an array, and use the function JSON to transform the elements into a JSON object or array. And the same goes the other way around. If you have a JSON object or array, you can now use JSON value to transform the elements and load them into a PL SQL aggregate type variable. The reason why we offer this new functionality is because the interaction between the Oracle database and application or services using the Oracle database does not always require or offer data in a relational way. New data or changes to data could be offered in a single JSON string. Processing the new data or making changes in the database based on the data would mean writing additional lines of PL SQL code and usually a lot of testing before the JSON string can be translated into relational lines and applied to the database. 
So using the new functionality, we can streamline the data interchange between PL SQL application and languages that support JSON. Here's an example of transforming a JSON array into a PL SQL aggregate. I have chosen to use a table type, but I could have used a vary as well because there are only single elements of data with a single field and not multiple fields. First, I declare a new type called the table type as a series of values of type number and indexed by a number. Please check the Oracle documentation on details on how to declare PL SQL aggregate types and when to use them. Based on this the table type, I declare a variable called my table. Then I create a variable called myJSON of type JSON. The JSON data type is a new data type in Oracle Since 21C specifically for JSON data. JSON data stored in a JSON data type is stored in a different way compared to a CLOP or FARCAR2 and is extremely performant when accessing individual values in the object, specifically in large objects. It is also guaranteed that a value stored in a JSON type column or variable is a valid JSON object. While declaring my JSON variable, I put the plain text JSON styled information in there, an array of three values, 10, 20 and 30. Using JSON value, I extract the individual values from the single JSON string and store them in my variable called my table. There is no additional code or programming needed, of course as long as the JSON string contains the correct number of fields compared to the table type. In the DBMS output section, I show the individual elements in my variable. So this is what it looks like in the database. This is the code we will execute. And this is the result. As you can see, the single JSON array has been transformed into a PL SQL array so that we can access and manipulate the individual values using regular PL SQL. Here is a second example the other way around. In this example, we start with a PL SQL aggregate, basically the same setup as we had in the previous example. Only this time, we do not put a value in the JSON variable, we put individual values in the elements of our myTable variable. Then, in the next step, these elements are transformed with a single command into JSON using the JSON statement. And the DBMS output shows the result. A regular JSON style string that can be used by other JSON consuming processes. This is what it looks like in the database. Here we have the code I showed you on the slide, and when executing it, we get the nice JSON output on the screen. So let's combine the options for bulk collect and this new JSON command feature. In this example, I am declaring a PL SQL aggregate table that has the same fields as the depth of department demo table inside the database. Without knowing exactly which columns the table contains, I can declare a PL SQL aggregate with fields based on this table. The variable my table is based on this new table, and of course we have a variable called my JSON to store the JSON output. By using the bulk collect statement, I do not have to declare a cursor to fill up every individual element of the PL SQL aggregate. With a single statement, I store all lines and fields in my variable. This is done with a single context switch and therefore very fast. In the following step, I'm using the JSON function to transform the individual elements in my aggregate and form a JSON array. And in the last step, I print the contents of the JSON variable on the screen in a way that is easily readable by humans. This is what it looks like in the database. First, the script as explained on the slides, and then after executing it, the output in JSON format. Since I asked the database to make things pretty, it's easier to read for humans. And just to be sure, here's the contents of the department or depth table so you can compare. In this last example, I'm leveraging the new functionality to insert records in bulk into a table. I first declare the new type, and using this new type, I'm declaring my variable called myTable. The myJSON variable is declared and filled with the data that we want to have inserted into my table. The first step that is executed is transforming the data in the JSON variable into a PL SQL aggregate. I specify the JSON data source and the structure I would like returned from the function. In this case, I want to have the table type structure returned. The result of this transformation is stored in my empty variable called myTable. Then, using the PL SQL aggregate, 
I can now write a for all clause requesting the PLSQL engine to insert all new records in the department or debt table. This is not done per statement, per line, but in a large bulk insert statement which only requires one trip to the SQL engine instead of one trip per record. This is what it looks like in the database. We begin with the PLSQL block from the slide. There will be no output from the PLSQL block, but the results should be visible in the department or debt table. Now that the PLSQL block has finished, here is the current contents of the department or debt table. As you can see, the contents of the JSON source has been inserted into the table. You can use the new functionality in a 23C database or higher with compatibility set to at least 20. Before 23C, only a string, a varchar2, a clop and blob data types were supported as input for the JSON function or return type for the JSON value function. When using database version 23C and higher, PLSQL aggregates become supported data types as well, like varays, records, object types from the database, nested tables and associative arrays. To summarize, starting database 23C, the JSON and JSON value functions support PLSQL aggregate functions as source and return types. By doing so, it's easier to exchange data between the Oracle database and systems that rely on JSON data for data interchange. Working with PLSQL aggregates enables, besides the flexibility of PLSQL in general, the use of bulk inserts, updates and deletes by removing context switching, which increases the throughput and speed of the interaction with the database. For more information about the new options for aggregates and JSON, go to the documentation section on oracle.com slash database slash 23C. And that brings us to the end of this explanation of the new options for JSON and JSON value function and PLSQL aggregates. If you want to start building with the next long-term support release of the Oracle database or play with its new features and options, please visit oracle.com slash 23C free to download your own Oracle database 23C free developers edition. You can easily install and run it on your own systems or in our always free Oracle Cloud infrastructure compute instances. Thank you for your time.